Nursing can be as stressful and draining as it is rewarding. Compassion fatigue was described in 1992 by a nurse called Joinson, who explained that it was a particular form of burnout unique to those who worked in healthcare or social care, those that had to provide care to others. It would further be described as a form of secondary traumatic stress reaction by Figley 1995, nearly identical to PTSD, but having derived from seeing the traumas that others suffer and providing care to them. Much like someone with PTSD, a nurse therefore might suffer from a constant state of heightened anxiety, intrusive symptoms, flashbacks and vivid memories of traumatic events, avoidance of others or reminders of trauma, nightmares and affected sleep. Crucially, in the case of compassion fatigue, the caregiver will have a reduced capacity for empathy towards other people and their suffering and trauma. This will greatly damage their ability to work as a caregiver. It appears that compassion fatigue has a more acute onset than burnout. The roles of empathy and engagement with patients in compassion fatigue are still not entirely understood. What is clear is that declining empathy is indicative of compassion fatigue, but it is less clear how they contribute initially and what type of person might be more likely, therefore, to suffer from compassion fatigue. You should distinguish burnout and CF from one another by realising that burnout stems simply from dissatisfaction with your work and the conditions in which you perform that work, be it long hours, stressful work, poor team dynamics, etc. Remember, though, that both are valid problems that should be treated seriously and acknowledged. Given the way in which empathy is so intrinsic to the development of CF, it might be that ensuring that relationships are balanced could be of use. This means nurses avoiding developing close relationships with their patients in which they take on some of their burden and instead developing balanced relationships in which patient and nurse work together as a team toward the patient becoming healthy. It has been found that nurses who are simultaneously caring for their elderly parents are more likely to develop CF due to having to perform a double duty and losing clarity over where the boundaries between their professional and personal lives lie. Compassion fatigue should be considered in informal caregivers too. An informal caregiver is anyone who cares for somebody else but outside of the boundaries of paid and professional work. This would typically mean a family member caring for a loved one. These caregivers may experience CF as they focus on the condition of their loved one and the trauma that they are going through. This in turn can lead to a reduction in their ability to provide care. With the number of such caregivers at such a high level in the UK and across the world, we must be aware of compassion fatigue in this group too. And nurses should be at the forefront of battling CF, both in their practice and personal lives, and through pushing for greater research and understanding into it, such that informal caregivers may benefit as well. In order to effectively combat CF, nurses must be educated on it. They must understand what compassion fatigue is and be able to readily recognise its symptoms. This means that nurses must be educated on it and on how to spot it in their colleagues. Some studies have found that nurses who maintain barriers in their care, i.e. those that do not form particular relationships with patients, are less likely to suffer from CF. Additionally, it may be the case that gaining new skills and knowledge are useful in the fight against CF, perhaps because of their ability to allow nurses to broaden their work. Caring for patients can be tough on nurses. What kind of problems do you think that they face as a result of their caring for so many people going through trauma? How do you think nurses can be better prepared to deal with burnout and compassion fatigue? Do you know what burnout and compassion fatigue are? How will you maintain your physical and emotional well-being whilst working as a nurse?